There is a Musk tweet out uh, for advisors, but uh, Goldman is still negotiating terms of an engagement here. Uh, here is Auto Trader executive analyst Michelle Krebs. Uh, we've got Needham and company managing director Rajiv Vindad Gill. Uh, you know what's interesting about this, and, and, and maybe you can help me, Raj, on this this idea that. Elon Musk is getting himself into trouble by constantly tweeting and talking about stuff that might not be sinister, mm -hmm. but raises concerns by government, uh, securities experts and the like, uh, that he's not passing this along to the board, he's not talking to anybody about it, he might be even violating some laws. What do you think? Well, I think his tweet's premature. Um, you know, when he says that funding is secured without having uh, any details arranged beforehand, um, if you look at his just recent blog, he basically said that he had met with the Saudis on July 31st, and the Saudis said that you know they, there's no question that they would you know, they would fund him. Uh, but then uh, they, he also says that that's contingent on due diligence, financial you know regulation, a lot of ifs and buts in terms of of, uh, of that statement. So I think that um, funding is is not secured. I think we're at a long way you know to go. There's a lot of complications. But well, would that have been a lie? I don't know if it will be a lie or not. I just think that um, it, it, I don't think it's an accurate statement um, to. It's usually a lie. But to make a, but, but to make a <laughs> definitive statement, a declarative statement saying that funding is secured when funding, we don't know if it's secured or not. We don't know the details of that um, gives a signal to the street that this is a done deal. And, yeah. and in our view, it's not a done deal. Before I went into this out, I do want to go to Michelle and, and everybody uh, play in here. Michelle, the one thing that's come up in this is that why go private in the first place? What level would it take to make it happen? Some say get up to $415, $420 a share. I don't know what the magic number is. But what does this say about what Elon Musk is up to and what's the next step? Well, it, what it, it, one reason he wants to go public is he's been under tremendous uh, scrutiny by analysts, by the media, uh, by shareholders, because there's a lot of pressure on the company right now. They're at a make or break point. Um, they had trouble getting the Model 3 out. Uh, and they're going to need more money going forward to continually um, uh, improve the product, to introduce new products. That's the key to the game in the auto business. Yeah, one of my, my takes on this is that he said funding was secured, predicated on the fact that he thought 66% of the current shareholders are going to go along with him from the public my markets into a private entity, given the fact that why would they do that, given that they're losing liquidity, they're losing some transparency. 66% seems to be a high number, but I think the fascinating aspect that's coming out of this is that Elon Musk shouldn't run this company. He should be the chief visionary officer, the chief innovation officer. That way you can have a buffer, a CEO, somebody that knows how to run a automobile company and can actually serve as a buffer between sort Elon of the and role the public. That Steve Jobs yeah. was serving and before he did come back and run the whole correct, company. Correct, exactly. Put in someone like Lee Iacocca, someone that knows production <laughs> issues. I'm not sure that that's just... the right choice either, to be honest. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's a cult stock yeah. and it's predicated on the cult status of Elon Musk himself. So, and a man who owns 20% of the shares, probably owns majority say on the board, it's hard to kick uh, out Elon uh, Musk, let's be honest. And this whole thing of going private, 70 plus billion dollars. Why not pump that cash into the company instead of doing a financial transaction? Yeah, I think going private is very puzzling at this point because if you look at the earnings call, he said they're going to be profitable starting in Q3 and going forward. So uh, why go private now if you're going to be profitable, which has been the biggest kind well, of Well, some tell me it's a head fake that he doesn't really want to go private. He wants to just rejigger interest in Well, I think that's a possibility. I mean, his convert is due uh, March of yeah. 2019. The strike conversion price is right, $359. Right. If he does not, if the stock price is not above 359 he owes $920 million in cash, March of 2019. They're burning through $2 billion of free cash flow. A year, wow. so they have they have current liabilities of of 9.1 billion. They have current assets of 6.7 billion. So they're in the deficit of 2.4 billion already. So um, it's it's a big stretch for them to become profitable. So and it's puzzling if they're going to be profitable. They're so you know um, definitive about that. They would be rewarded with a very high stock price. A third of the shares outstanding are short. So if the sh if the shorts uh, if no, the no, shorts people betting the stock betting against the stock is going to go down if they, mm -hmm. if the shorts realize they're going to be actually profitable on a consistent basis they're going to get crushed the stock price is going to go up significantly higher.
So why you know, take it private now? That's the question we Michelle, have. Michelle, one of the things, and Kevin raised this, is what would be so crazy about taking someone like an Elon Musk if he's known and more these days for being like a Donald Trump with tweets that can rattle and, and concern everybody, that, that uh, he goes upstairs, he's the, the visionary, whatever you want to say. Uh, we, we've seen the, the, the Google guys try this, you know, when they brought Schmidt in, and it, you, 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 you've seen it. In countless other cases, uh, even the Steve Bomber taking over for, you know, Bill Gates, uh, Microsoft's a bit of a different example there. But there, there is precedent for this. Or would that just be just adding insult to injury? Well, I think it would be a smart idea because he is the visionary. But what we have seen, especially with all of the production problems with the Model 3, for example, he really needs some expertise in, in certain areas, production being one of them. I go out and hire the best Toyota uh, manufacturing uh, supervisor I could find, for example, uh, to... Uh, to take care of those, let let the experts take care of those issues. Let him be the visionary. The, 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 I would the, also the, add too. We, were, we 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 talked about all the money that's going out the door right now. What about the the investments for the future? He, there's talk about uh, building the plant in China. Um, he's talked about new products coming, trucks uh, and such. Those are going to take a lot of money too. So uh, the money taking the company uh, private will hinder those plans. I would think. And then this gets to the whole thing about leadership. One of the things that Steve Jobs learned painfully was to how to bring productive people, creative people, and keep them as a team. When he was younger, he drove them away. He learned how to bring them together. Does Musk have the ability to bring, you know, a lot, there's been a lot of people leaving that company. Does he have the ability to bring creative people on, production people on, and keep them as a team and work together? He's That's had a problem key. with that. You know, the more I think about their, their affinity for tweeting, I mean, they both have similar problems. That is, uh, you know, Musk and the president, because they, they can't keep people. Uh, I don't know if any of Musk's people have recorded conversations with him, but it's weird, right? It, it's kind of, it's just like, let's start thinking about it.